the uh, meditation helps me remember that uh, this act of offering love and kindness is important to be framed in some very real and concrete ways that there is need in the world. That this act of offering this kind regard, it begins by thinking and offering, and sending out through the ethers with love to one another. But there's also uh, this action component to love. And metta isn't uh, usually or translated into love. Um, it's an unconditional friendliness or kind regard. There's no good English word for metta. Uh, but often it's... Um, we talk about this love for one another. And I like I like the word love. It gives me a warm feeling in my heart. Um, and I um, have been practicing with what what does that really mean? And one of the things that I've been working with lately is uh, truthfulness as love. And you know, by beginning to think of love as an action rather than a feeling, it builds in some accountability, some responsibility towards uh, one another, for ourselves, accountability for our words, for our actions. You know, uh, In this practice, uh, truthfulness is one of the, the paramis, so the qualities that uh, support freedom from greed, hatred, and delusion. And I, I think that in order to know love, we have to be able to tell the truth both to ourselves and to others. And I don't mean in uh, only in speech, although that's obviously very important, um, but to be able to see things as they are, right? to not layer the story or to deceive ourselves intentionally, habitually, I mean, the world is on fire, literally, in many ways right now, uh, with the opposite of truthfulness. And we have seen the fruits of this for several years now. And so this living in truth is not only one of this outward expression, speech and action, acknowledging the way things are, but also one of listening, being willing to hear one another's truth, and perhaps more, most importantly, affirm the value of truth telling. We often have, as I indicated in the meditation, we have these preconceived or fixed ideas of other who others are. Perhaps based on the way they look or a group that they belong to. Often based on some uh, perhaps very cursory information. 
I like what Ruth King says. She says, to cultivate a culture of care, we must be willing to enter into a mindful relationship to engage each other in wise care. And this includes speaking of our concerns in a timely manner, or, I like this or, or as soon as we feel steady and clear. And I appreciate that because often in practice we get distracted or confused by this commitment to not cause harm. And we confuse this truthfulness, bearing truth with causing harm. And it's important to remember that um, we're talking about karma, that karma is about our intention. And our intention is either wholesome or unwholesome. Are we aiming to uh, cultivate goodness, kindness, is it um, towards the detriment of spiritual growth? Or is it um, going to be of benefit to others? And so this intention, the renunciation and the meditation, or this intention for goodwill and harmlessness, is important when we think about our engagement with one another our speech and our action. Is sometimes because we care for one another, because we are committed to kind engagement with one another, some difficult truths have to be spoken. And yes, this intention, when this intention is toward connection and understanding and care, it's important to remember what that intention sets in motion. And we can also look at what is set in motion when our intention is to deceive, to not be truthful with ourselves, with others. And someone said, I don't know who, uh, that we are not what we think we are. We are what we hide. And oftentimes we hide what we truly think or how we were deeply impacted by one another, or how we feel, or fear or concern that another will be hurt, or that somehow their perception of us will be influenced. Perhaps our idea that their perception of us is one of perfection. We don't want to taint that. But this truthfulness, this transparency is really relevant in how we relate to our inner life. Right? These, these secrets that we have or these ideas that we have of ourselves. And I, I don't want to confuse secrecy with privacy. Right? Keeping secrets is, is an active process. One that requires some deliberate energy to keep hidden what is true, what is actual, what is real. 
And I think of the secret being different from uh, just being private. We often become just like obsessed, preoccupied with the secret. Being guarded and closed. And disconnected from others. And then often becomes necessary to like construct this protective barrier to maintain the secret. We get a sense of one another when there's something not being shown, right? We have a sense of it. And so there can be this active effort to sort of fool others or hide ourselves from others, hide our feelings, uh, thoughts and beliefs. Perhaps this confused idea that we need to always agree with one another have the same view, have the same beliefs in order to be in kind, caring relationship with one another. And in some ways then too, we attempt to fool ourselves, sort of pull the, <laughs> pull the wool over our own eyes, constructing this whole a deluded fantasy world, perhaps not fantasy, feeling the need to protect. Yeah. And oftentimes when we look closely, um, some of that is founded in having these fixed views, ideas of what other people think, right? what we want people to think, idea of what's good and what's right. And this uh, reacting to these secrets or views and becomes a way of life. This habitual sort of ducking and dodging, this protecting this ego that needs to be held high, seen as perfect and unflawed. The heart that is afraid, is fearful. And love, this kind regard, it really cannot be cultivated from fear, from a place of fear. And so this truthfulness is love, is uh, this examination. With all of the protections that we have that keep us separated from one another. And this practicing, sitting, meditating, studying together, we cultivate an openness that makes us see more clearly, helps us set the intention to see more clearly, to soften our hearts, willingness to walk gently in the world. 
and we really become interested in how we act out our preferences. We become interested in how these views and judgments and biases have come to be. And we want to, and we begin to sensitize ourselves to the way we act, act out these preferences. And it can be an unpleasant journey to see the way that we act out our judgment, our biases. Because we feel the love, the kindness in our heart. We have this intention. We practice. And it could be no other way. All of the conditioning that we've had in our lives. But we also feel this uh, bit of relief when we're not manipulating the story, distorting the story, making all of this effort to present ourselves as other than we are. There is a in 12-step programs or in recovery programs, we talk about being clean. And that that really resonates with me. We have no, nothing to hide. We're able to express our heart, what is on our heart with patience, with kindness, with an intention toward connecting, understanding. And it can take a lot of effort, not necessarily to to be truthful, right? to see things as they are, the effort is in overcoming our habits, the momentum of habitually distracting ourselves, deceiving ourselves, unpacking the stories that we replayed over and over and over without question, right? We begin to investigate and we can appreciate just the, the, the simplicity of truthfulness. I remember discovering uh, my early adulthood that when I didn't know something, I could actually just say that. I don't know. And I remember I would, you know, have a lot of words around saying something that didn't say I didn't know, but made it sound like I might know or I have an idea. But to simply see what is there. And be and the integrity to stay there with it, not to paint it in some other way. You know, there's a I guess a scale of lies that's acceptable. <laughs> you know, there's a, a little white lie, which why well, it's 
white and okay is a whole nother talk probably. But of all of the precepts, um, they are all but one forgivable. <laughs> and the one that is not is to not be truthful. So we sit, <laughs> we talk with uh, other friends in the Dharma who are making the choice to see clearly, making the choice to be vulnerable in many ways and to practice together sort of feeding on the truth, not turning away. And it can be disruptive to the way that we like to see ourselves, the way that we like to see one another or humankind. I'm really reminded of this, especially right now, uh, the last several weeks, um, as there have been eruptions and disruptions at the capital and communities across the nation, and people expressing their frustration and outrage and hatred and a lot of things being expressed. And people, I've heard people saying, this is not who we are. And the hard truth is that indeed, it is who we are. And until we can turn toward that, understanding of what is here in this moment, as well as how we got here, all of the causes and conditions, all of our all of the ways that we have othered each other and turned away from our long history in this country of disregarding one another particularly black and brown bodies. And it's a long list, women and children. The violence that has been perpetuated for generations centuries it could really be no other way and so we are called once again today as we were yesterday and the day before to see one another in all of our flawed and confused ways. Mm -hmm. And with our commitment to connection, and patience, kindness, generosity, right? not causing harm, we move toward one another. The difference of opinion, 
belief of what is right. Yeah. Some people here this evening that have been part of, a, that were part of, it was several years ago now, this group of common ground community members, folks interested in coming together to talk about just this separation, this divide that has been created as a result of our uh, investment, belief in our differences, primarily around race. And it, it was difficult and even painful in many ways, in many moments. And I think in part, because we have this idea of good Buddhists maybe, and if we are good practitioners and meditate, that it will only be easy. You know, ease translates into easy. And if it's difficult and emotional, and that clearly cannot be, or surely cannot be part of the practice. But this is that disruption, right? Seeing the truth as it is, disrupting the way that we see ourselves, understanding how this mind has arrived here. All of the tactics that we've engaged to honestly delude ourselves. That the way to connection is around or over, but not through. And once we begin to lean into opening to this truth and feeling the, the relief that can come from not being guarded, not being defended. We're also affirmed that as human beings, we are resilient beyond anything that we can imagine. that we can have difficult conversations and connect with one another in deep and meaningful ways. That transform us. And when we choose to not name truth, not name what is real. It leaves a void in our relationships. We often don't feel seen or fully understood. And so this, this truthfulness of, as love is a choice, a choice to connect, to find ourselves, to see ourselves in each other, seeing the humanity and one another. Mm -hmm. This uh, commitment to truth 
truth and with a happy, a commitment to happiness and commitment to peace, being clean. And centered in this intention. And this intention to uh, act from a place of kindness and generosity to let love and wisdom guide us when we Allow fear, greed, hatred, delusion to guide us. We get to a place that when we are shown ourselves, we say, this isn't who we are. I didn't grow up in the church, uh, but I think we've all uh, at least heard that you know, the truth shall set you free. And there's a, a philosopher that said it's the Similar, it's the truth that liberates us, not our effort to be free. We often maybe want to sit down solitary on the cushion and will goodness out toward others so that when we step out into the world, it's different. The truth is, that we all, it requires effort from all of us, this transformation. So the mind is capable of holding what is true. And the heart and open and is amazingly resilient. And honestly, I found that uh, yeah, this mind that constructs the story of what is acceptable right? what's acceptable when it's appropriate to name truth or in a certain way or with certain people it's more story it's more constriction and that a great deal of this practice is leaning into fearlessness. Trusting that the intention of this heart to be caring, to be compassionate, is the wisdom that will bind our hearts together. When, when we aim to, when we use truth as a weapon, <laughs> that is a very different intention than I care for you. 
can use truth as a way of connection. We will grow together. And it's not the growing together that we make effort towards. It is the opening of the heart. It is seeing clearly, speaking honestly, and acting from this place of integrity. I think I'm going to leave it there.